Jasper Andrew Little. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker, and let me quickly acknowledge, in light of your announcement earlier today, um, and I know this won't be the time for uh, lengthy acknowledgements, but acknowledge your uh, enormous and huge contribution to the House, not only not to this House, but to the good order of it. And, Mr. Speaker, it's an honour to be speaking in your presence and under your chairmanship uh, this afternoon. Mr. Speaker, I think the most interesting observation to make about the last speaker is that for once, we have a National Party MP that understands what a drought is. Not only understands what a drought is, but what the impact is on the local region and on the economy. Because, you see, the last lengthy drought we had was 2007. And every time this government recounts our economic fortunes going back to around about that time, they never ever talk about the lengthy drought that caused the recession uh, that took place in this country before even the global financial crisis. This is a government, this is a government that has a selective memory, didn't understand what was happening then, and frankly, if you look at this budget, barely understands what is happening now. Right. Mr Speaker, we heard the, we heard the, uh, the uh, ridiculous comments about ACC from the last Speaker and also from the Minister for ACC earlier this afternoon, as if by some magic they have, they have turned this great corporation that is so important to the wealth of the nation around. They've done nothing of the sort. They've done nothing of the sort. They contrived a crisis that never existed. They hiked the levies. They've ripped off every worker and business in this country. They've now realised they've overrigged the pudding. When they got advice at the end of last year to reduce the levies, they thought, oh, don't want to, we don't want to admit we're wrong. Uh, we'll have to blame the officials, but we'll do that further down the track and we'll leave the current levies in place. And we'll over-levy the nation by the tune of one to two billion dollars a year for another year while the economy is trying to recover. That is how short-sighted and how frankly shallow they are. Mr Speaker, I want to talk about the area of uh, justice and the justice group of votes because they are very important and what is happening there is a crying shame. So we have seen the biggest uh, proportion of vote justice goes into legal aid. Legal aid is very important. It's applied in a number of ways. It applies to those who are impecunious, those who are on low incomes, and those who are facing the full force of the state through the uh, police prosecutions and Crown prosecutions, and they are entitled to assistance to defend themselves, especially when their liberty is at stake. So legal aid plays a very important part. It, is, it, it was cut by $15 million in last year's budget, it's been cut by another $12 million a year in this budget, and the trend is a continuing cut in that area. The number, and when we see the figures, the, the, the new legal aid regime took effect last year, when we see what the impact has been, the number of legal aid lawyers has fallen dramatically, nearly 300 in a year. That's lawyers who were available to do legal aid work who are no longer doing it. And not, not just any lawyers, senior lawyers as well. So bad has it been in a single year, the government now has had to put together a special program and a spe special package to draw back senior lawyers who have since left the system because it has got so hard, but most, most importantly to them is it has become so unfair. The number of firms doing legal aid work is falling rapidly because partners and law firms are now saying, listen, we're just not going to buy the time it takes to make the application and uh, to get a fair rate is just too hard for us. And while this is good for young developing lawyers, put them on a bit of legal aid work, give them a bit of courtroom experience, with the supervision of senior partners, it has all just become too hard and law firms are rapidly retreating from that type of work, no matter how important it is uh, constitutionally and for our system of justice. But one of the most important areas we are yet to see the impact of, and we will see it under this budget, is in the area of family law, because this government is now putting through its legislation, which is about minimising the role of lawyers in this very difficult area of work. An area of work where the people who are users of the system, the justice system, the family court, usually separating parents, are needing not just advice, not just legal advice, but support as well. And this government now has a programme which is about minimising it, reducing it, and they plan to significantly cut the cost of legal aid in the family law section. The price for that will be 
Well, it's the, the reason they will, they will uh, justify that is they will say the warring parents can get on and do it themselves with a facilitator. And, and we don't have to have independent representation of children anymore. We're going to scrap most of that uh, because the parents who are tied up in the stress and distress and tragedy of separation, well, they'll be in a perfectly fit state to represent the best interests of the children. That's the thinking of this government. And so they will cut legal aid to the parents. They will cut the access to uh, legal advice and representation to children, so they will no longer have an independent advice. And sure, they'll save money. They'll save money in that area, but we know where it's going to be picked up. It'll be picked up in a whole heap of other areas, in the criminal justice area, in the health area, and in other areas of government spending. It is, um, and of course, on top of all this, we've had the mishandling of the Legal Aid Project, which is now under yet another le expensive legal appeal. So the other area that is very important is uh, community law centres. And that is another area that has been struggling for some time to keep the attention of the government. The last Minister of Justice, uh, the Honourable Simon Power, did a good job in providing ongoing funding to the community law centres because he recognised the important role they play. This Minister is doing her level best to make it harder and harder for community law centres. So sure, we've got funding for another year, the budget says there's funding for a year after that, but it's subject to conditions. And the community law centres have to meet now a whole new heap of expectations and, and uh, guidelines and rules. They are required to get out of the education mode that is so important to the work they do, particularly things like youth law and disability law, where the, the, the heart of their work is educative work. That will go over time, and they'll be left to do uh, giving... Uh, uh, interim advice uh, to the, the people who walk up to the community law centres. But the funding that is in the budget this year is conditional on making changes, and the community law centres know that they are now up for major upheaval, and it will be in the area of consolidations of centres and mergers, and that is going to be very difficult. It will take away the whole notion of community from community law centres if this government mishandles it or at least handles it as badly as they have done the Legal Aid Project. Let's not make that mistake again. Let's not let this government make that mistake again. Uh, it, is, uh, it will be a travesty if they do. Then I want to talk about victim services. And we had uh, the Minister of Justice earlier today, and, and indeed yesterday, making an announcement about, um, about victim services. The only thing she talked about was restorative justice. It's the quasi parsonical aspect of uh, criminal justice. <laughs> Uh, but, Mr Speaker, she acted in her quasi parsonical way to say that, oh, they put, four million, they put $4 million in restorative justice. But what about the other aspects of victims' rights? You see, she announced yesterday there's another $739,000 extra going into victims' rights. And you know what, Mr Speaker? That's money they've already got. It's money they collected from the offenders' levy. They've collected so much of it and spent so little. They've been able to beef up their total spending this year by... $5 million. That's the unspent amount of the offender's levy. Great idea to collect it. They don't know how to use it. And sure, there should, there's got to be support, much better support for uh, victims and uh, for victim services. But they are playing ducks and drakes and they are playing smokes and mirrors, if I could mix my metaphors in that, uh, in that way. Sir, so there is no extra $739,000. And the commitment to the, the, this government's commitment to victims and victims' rights can be seen in their Victims' Orders Against Offenders Bill, which is the biggest joke around. It is going to cost victims. It requires victims, the victims of serious crime, to step up and take the initiative uh, against the offenders who have caused them considerable harm and uh, humiliation and, and injury. They, they have to pay for it. And the threshold for getting it is so high that very few will actually be ordered. It is a cynical attempt at pushing the criminal justice button out in the community without making a commitment to do anything at all. If there's one thing this government should be funding, it should be funding the processes under that bill that we are yet to debate. Finally, sir, I want to touch on the Crown Law Office uh, under the vote Attorney General. Now, we're seeing the vote for Crown Law reduce heavily because the budget for Crown solicitors is being cut massively. Some Crown solicitors, some officers are suffering cuts of up to 35 per cent. 35 per cent, and we know what the price of that will be. 
fewer prosecutions on fewer charges, more criminals getting away with it, uh, sentencing that will reflect the fewer charges, and actually it will do no good for criminal justice and no good for peace and good order in our society. Sir, the budget is a joke. I call the Honourable Minister Michael Woodhouse. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I'd uh, be very keen to talk about...